circularity is part of the answer to uh, enable faster energy transition. And on, on that affordability question, there is uh, scarcity of some of these resources, but there is also a question, for instance, on hydrogen. Green hydrogen is very promising, but raises a huge question of affordability and cost. So, Yusung, you've been giving some thought on that very precisely. Can you share them with us? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I think the, mo the most important factor going forward in, uh, to bring down uh, hydrogen costs so that they can be affordable to customers is, uh, without doubt, government subsidy. Uh, hydrogen is, very ex is an ex expensive fuel right now. Uh, the basic rationale behind the economics of hydrogen is that uh, the costs will come down as, uh, as producers of e electrolyzers like Linde of, of Germany, Air Product of France, and Siemens. Uh, as they build more, uh, produce more uh, electrolyzers, their production costs will come down. So uh, this will drive uh, the, the, the prices for hydrogen down along with uh, lower renewable energy costs. But uh, according to Bloomberg New, uh, New Energy Finance, uh, currently in 2022, the cost of producing green hydrogen in Korea is $7.85. Uh, they forecast this uh, price to come out, this uh, cost to come down to $2.47 by uh, 2030 and to $1.43 by uh, 2050. But um, what I am concerned uh, recently is that simply the demand for hydrogen is not growing as fast as we would like them to. Um, in Korea, for example, uh, the, the government's initial plan uh, by the end of 2000, this year, 2022, uh, was to have 67,000 hydrogen cars out in the market uh, selling and running. Um, as of the end of October of this year, uh, that number was 27,870 cars. So only 43% of the target has been met. So, so why is this? Um, uh, in term, uh, when you look at uh, customer burden, burden uh, I think that customers are very well subsi uh, subsidized uh, in when they buy their hydrogen cars. Uh, for example, uh, the price of a Hyundai Nexo, which is the uh, uh, hydrogen, hydrogen car offered by uh, Hyundai, uh, the price tag is $57,000. And what the government does is that they uh, provide around $26,000, uh, which is around 46%. So customers can buy a Hyundai Nexo for uh, $31,000. This is uh, roughly uh, the same as a mid-size SUV, Hyundai Santa Fe, uh, out in the market. So uh, definitely, uh, customers uh, are not losing by buying a uh, 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 hydrogen car in Korea. Um, in terms of fuel costs, uh, there is a, a de facto uh, price uh, cap on uh, the price of hydrogen uh, that is used uh, to fuel the cars, uh, which is around at around $7 per kilogram. But um, if you want to compare the, uh, uh, the cost of hydrogen to, to diesel and, and gasoline, uh, you have to uh, compare it in terms of how many uh, kilometer it's going to go uh, for every, uh, uh, how much it costs for ev every kilometer uh, that the car is running. Uh, so uh, for hydrogen cars, uh, the cost is 9.5 cents per kilometer. Um, for gasoline, uh, that's uh, 11 cents, and for diesel is 10.6 cents. So, in terms of fuel, uh, customers there again are definitely uh, having incentives to buy uh, hydrogen cars. Uh, but I, uh, in the end, customers they complain why aren't when, when we ask them why aren't you buying more uh, hydrogen cars? What they complain is about there's not enough fueling stations out there for them to refuel their cars. So, um, uh, and if you ask hydrogen suppliers, uh, like Hyosung, uh, we complain, hey, there's not enough vehicles out there for us to make 
uh, build more uh, hydrogen stations. Yeah. So uh, this dilemma really becomes a classic uh, a question of which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you look at the uh, graph uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the presentation uh, on, on, on the screen, uh, that, that is uh, the average loss uh, incurred by a single hydrogen station in two th 2021 was $76,000. Um, the government covered around 61% of those costs, but that's, that doesn't include include the 50% uh, depreciation costs for, the, for actually investing in the facilities. Uh, the government uh, gives you money, 50% uh, of the money that you need to build a uh, hydrogen station, but they don't uh, uh, provide funding for the other 50%. Uh, so that, that is incurred as a, co as a cost to the uh, hydrogen uh, fuel station. So if you factor in this depreciation cost, uh, the coverage of government subsidy is only around 40%. So, I mean, if you're, if you're losing uh, money every year, I mean, I don't think businesses are going to uh, build more uh, hydrogen stations. So the basic rationale behind hydrogen is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, more demand, uh, producing more electrolyzers, uh, bringing down the cost. But if uh, demand is, is not picking up as high as, as we would like, then uh, do you think really uh, the makers of uh, electrolyzers, would they be producing more electrolyzers? No. And I think uh, this is where I think the government has to uh, really think about uh, uh, in what volumes do they want to subsidize the hydrogen industry? So yeah. definitely uh, government uh, funding is the most important uh, factor between now and 2030 and 40 until uh, the price of hydrogen really becomes affordable to uh, customers. Oh, thank you. Th thank you, Yosung, because on, on the back of uh, this illustration, very pragmatic and detailed illustration on, uh, based on, I, b I assume, Korean market, uh, it, it's clear that uh, uh, for the hydrogen, it's an entire value chain in, in order to, for it to become, you know, a, a retail, I including up to the cars, a source of uh, uh, affordable energy, it requires a lot of investments uh, and, um, and not only subsidies uh, for the end consumers. So